Good morning to you all from the central region of the Johannesburg Church of Christ. My name is Clint Chanai. Let us read from the book of Psalm 46, verse 10, to prepare our hearts and minds for the upcoming message. It reads, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nation. I will be exalted in the earth. Let us pray. But Lord God, uh, we pray this morning that you be with us as we listen to this message, Lord. We pray that uh, our hearts and minds will be open and be properly receptive to your word, Lord. Let your word be rooted in our hearts so that we may be able to understand and carry out your word. As you say, Lord, uh, Lord, we just pray that we will be able to strengthen each other with your word and be able to overcome challenges as a community lord as a whole as one entity um, that looks up to you for strength lord a lord we pray in all this in your son's name thank you lord amen Worship with us this morning. Lift your hands if you feel like it. But just know that God is awesome. My God is your voice and say how
bless your name, Jesus. Good morning, church. I'm very excited this morning to announce our guest speaker, and then his name is uh, Remo Simpiwe Tlale from the Northwestern region. He served the youth and family ministry over there, and he's been on the ministry for over four years, and he started to serve on a one-year challenge, and then he went down to Deben to serve at the church in Deben, and then came back to Johannesburg. And also, we are just very excited that probably that's his last service. And then uh, here in Joburg, he will be going down to Cape Town also to serve the church in Cape Town and then under youth and family ministry. We are very excited to have you, Remo. And then thank you so much for coming and embracing us with this time. And then we pray that you will have a great time of being uh, encouraged, of being uh, 
rebuked of being uh, uh, brought back to the word of God. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, it is so good to be with the central region uh, of the Joburg Church. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I wish it was different. I, I really wish we could have been in the same, uh, same room together. Uh, but unfortunately, this is what we have, and so we will just embrace it. Uh, you know, Baba Mfundo is an interesting character because we've been talking about having me come and speak in the central for a while. But evidently, I'll only speak for Baba Mfundo when it's the end of something. You know, in 2020, in March, we went on a trip to Umtata. Uh, we took a, a bunch of people. I think Luto was even there. He was part of the central region. And, and we got to be together at MTAT, and we were just able to share our faith with the people. We were able to just hang out. We had some games with the teens, and, and it was a great time. But it was literally the week before Cyril Ramaphosa would enforce Level 5 lockdown. And so I got to preach that Sunday, MTATA, uh, and, and I was the last speaker that MTATA heard live in inaction uh, before lockdown happened. And, and now uh, I get to preach here in the central region again, Baba Mfundo asking me to preach. And the reason I'm, you know, the, the reason I, I'm laughing is because this is my last sermon in Johannesburg. Uh, we are literally embarking on a journey to go down to Cape Town. And I say it that way because Cape Town, good. It's very far to get down there, but we are so, so excited about it. God has uh, opened many a door for, for Palestine and I to be able to move down there, for her to go back into the corporate space, for me to continue full time in the ministry. And, and we're just looking forward to prayerfully God using us uh, to do something good in his church. And so I'm so grateful to the Nondalas for having me and the friendship that we've been able to develop over the years. I know most of you know Baba Mfundo, uh, but he is an interesting character. He's, he's out there, he's crazy, he's wild, but he has a fervent love for God in his church. And he leads with such great passion and zeal. Uh, and Mam Nobuntu is just an incredible support. I know her and Palisa have a great relationship. And so I'm so grateful for them and our partnership in the gospel. And then I'm also grateful for the Mugochis. You know, I'll be eternally grateful uh, to this couple, uh, Baba Rodwell in particular, who took a chance on a 17-year-old remote Lali. That he said, man, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to go with you. And I remember our first appointment was at McDonald's and he, uh, he bought me food. And I thought, yo, you know, th this guy is serious about me because he bought me food. And after many a conversation, many a month, uh, he was at the pool uh, when I would get baptized. And he was there when conversations about me going into the ministry came up and doing the one-year challenges. Baba Mfundo alluded to it. And he was there and he was saying, bro, I believe in you. You can do this. And help me get into the full-time ministry. You know, when I was thinking of moving to Durban, he was there and he was saying, you can go, you can do this. Because again, he believed in me and, and so many other times. And he's, Mama O has been instrumental in helping Palestine in the, in the ministry. As she's, she was instrumental in even Palestine and I realizing that maybe there's a potential uh, life partner in each other. And so I'm so grateful to the Nondalas and the Mugochis. Uh, for their incredible service full-time in the ministry. But then I'm so excited about what's happening uh, with the young people in this region. You know, I've got friends like Benjamin and Luto and Tulu and, and KG, and I'm just seeing young people stepping up to lead, to learn, to love, and to just be incredible members of the Central Region. You know, I was part of the Central Region many moons ago. Some of you might remember me in Kid Zone. Uh, if you do, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I'm sure I backchatted you. I'm sure I gave you a hard time. Uh, but it's just so good to be able to be together this morning. And you know, when I, when I consider what's gone on in the last 365 odd days since Sir Ramaphosa imposed the lockdown here at the end of March 2020, it has been a long 766 years. I mean, not even the Israelites have felt what we have felt in the desert. It's been a rough couple of months. I know it's, it's just been 12 months technically, but it's felt like it has not stopped. And in fact, it really hasn't because we still have to wear our masks and do all of that stuff wherever we go. But it's incredible to think what has happened to society and the world in during this time. You know, Zoom meetings, uh, just some statistics here, Zoom meetings have gone from 10 million on average per week to over 300 million subscribers on average per week. You know, Netflix has gained 36.57 million new subscribers. This has all happened in this last kind of 12 month period. You know, the time spent washing dishes has decreased by over an hour. Now, I'm not sure if it decreased because people are not washing their dishes or if they've gotten so good at washing dishes because they're always at home that it's just taken less time. And we'll have to ask the teens because I'm sure that's the one, those are the ones who are washing the dishes more in their homes. 
But you know, the average person sleeps 18 minutes more. Now that doesn't seem like much, but when you take that over the billions of people over the planet, you realize, man, everyone is generally sleeping more. And if you care about the planet, you know, the world's CO2 emissions are at their lowest point for 70 years. Why do I tell you all of this? I say this to say the world has changed. Drastically, it, this lockdown that we have all felt in different ways and, and different countries have done it differently, but this type of pandemic that has struck the earth in this era is unique to our time. And what it's done is it's exposed who we are. It's brought questions about who will we, who will we become. It's made us, you know, re really love certain things and really not love certain things. It's, it's really made us really think about, okay, what, what is life actually about? And so the question I have for us this morning is if this is what has happened to the world, that more people are in Zoom meetings, more people are watching Netflix, less people are washing dishes, who will we be? As we begin to exit out of lockdown, as the vaccines roll out, who will we be? Who will we be as a church? As a family of believers, who will we be? Who will we be as a small group or a Bible talk? Who will we be as families? And that's any type of family, whether you're a single mom or you're just you as a single brother, single sister in a household, or maybe, you know, there's all sorts of people in your home. Who will you be as a family? And then lastly, who will we be as individuals? Who will you be when all of this is said and done? And what I, what I want to do today is hopefully ask you to imagine with me a desired future, a vision of a place and a time and a, a group and a people that we can become that I think will stand the test of time. To be able to do that, would you turn with me to Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And I'll read, the Bible says, All the believers were one in heart and mind, no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought them to the feet of the brought the money, sorry, from the sales and put them at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So what we pick up here is in the book of Acts, and the book of Acts is really a historical account of how the first century church began, developed, and then went all across the whole known world up until a point. And it's written by this doctor named Luke, and he, he's literally taken a historical account, fact for fact, bit by bit, he's walked through it. And, and in many ways, he's involved in the story because he's also part of the first century church. But where we, where we get into the story here is after the most used verse in Acts, I think is Acts 2.42, talking about a community, is this picture of the community. And what Luke highlights is he says they were all one in heart and in mind. Now, I know that, uh, you know, there was a particular Soweto Derby played. I won't speak about results, but what I will say is, in this group, whether you were a Pirates fan or a Chiefs fan, they sat together, they were one in heart and mind. You know, I know that in, in England right now, there is a certain light blue team that's doing better than other red teams in the country. And I'm not gonna, again, talk about what's going on there, but what I will say is those people were able to sit together in this small group or in this church, in this community, and they were able to be friends. Why? Because the things that mattered most, they agreed on. See, it doesn't matter what team you support. It doesn't matter what, you know, what country you support. It doesn't matter how you think about things. But the things that matter most, we need to be one in heart and mind. Well, the Bible then continues and it says that they shared all that they had. Everything that they had was communal. It, it wasn't mine, 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 like, like, you know, how sometimes kids can be. It was, man, I want to share. I want to give. I want to be able to, you know, give to this community and add value. You know, the Bible goes on to say that there was great and powerful preaching that was being done there. And you can imagine, I mean, you know, the, the apostles testifying about the resurrection. Man, I love powerful preaching. You know, the Bible says that God's grace was with them. I mean, the, the, the other versions will talk about the beauty of the Lord was among them. And it was so much so that there were no needy people among them. Think about that. Imagine that that was your 
Bible talk. That that was this church, this region of the Joburg church. Everyone was one in heart and mind. We all agreed on, on the things that mattered most. We shared all that we had. No one had need in among us, especially after a time like COVID. We were taking care of one another. That there was great and powerful preaching. I mean, I know that one's happening for sure. And then the grace of God was among them. It's incredible. If you imagine this, the call that I want to call us to, I want to say, can we be this together as we move forward? Right? Because we need to know. We need to consider that because COVID has done what it's done, we are going to need to exit differently. And this morning, what I want to highlight is this gentleman named Joseph. Right? It's quite an interesting story, isn't it? That the Bible, where usually it just writes, everybody's doing this or what have you, that Luke decides, man, this guy, this particular guy named Joseph, I want to underline him as Barnabas. Because the Bible said many people were selling their property and giving it to the apostles. But yet, Joseph, this Levite from Cyprus, is underlined. And we're, known, we're made known to us his nickname, which was Barnabas, the son of encouragement. You know, nicknames are quite an interesting thing when you think about them, isn't it? I mean, if you're a, if you're a tall person, they call you Jovis Malanka. Or you know, they, they call you like a tree or whatever they may say. Or if you're a short person, they'll, they'll maybe call you Cortez or Minimi. You know, if you have big ears, they'll call you Dumbo. I mean, people can be so harsh. Especially kids, right? I know my nickname in primary school, I'm not proud of this, but they called me Lollipop. Because they said I had a big head and a slender body. And if you know the song, I'm not going to sing it. Uh, that was the song that they used to sing when I'd walk around at school. It was rather discouraging, to be honest. But that's how nicknames work. We pick on things. But you know, in the Bible, when names changed, it was, pow it was a powerful thing. You know, Abraham in Genesis, he becomes Abraham, the father of all nations. You know, Peter, the, the apostle, he, he was originally Simon. And then Jesus gives him the name Peter. And in this passage, Joseph, this Levite from Cyprus, is given the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So this morning, as we consider... Who will we be as we exit lockdown? I want to call us to be sons and daughters of encouragement. So the question and my first point is, what does it mean to be a son or a daughter of encouragement? And the answer is simple. It's to be a son or a daughter of exaltation, of counseling, of healing, of generosity. You know, as I was doing some research on, on this Joseph situation, I, I tried to understand what does it mean? And what the, 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 the writer of this commentary I was reading was saying is that it's, it's to use not only your time, not only your words, not only your goods, but your actual being to be there with someone and to instill courage in them. So think about it. You know, what, what is highlighted by Luke is that he sold land and that was the thing. But that's goods. That's our money. It must have been that he was like Baba Mike. I don't know if you, if you have this experience. Every time I, bu I bump into Baba Mike, he's excited to see me. Doesn't matter how long it's been, but he's always excited to see me. And he's always asking me about how everybody is doing. How's your mom? How's your siblings? How's your, how's your nephew? How's your niece? You know, he's always interested. He's using his words in that situation. You know, sometimes it's people who just have time for you. You know, that they just sit there and they listen to your story and as you unpack it for them. That's what it means to be a son or a daughter of encouragement. It means to come alongside someone with your time, with your goods, with your words, and instill courage in them. And you might ask yourself, Rima, why is this important? Why would we need this? And I think the simple answer, which is my second point here, is because life is hard. The reason we need sons and daughters of encouragement is because life is hard. You know, on my way to come and record this sermon, I bumped into a person that I had done exchange with uh, multiple times at a coffee shop called Bean There. And she looked at me through the mask and I looked at her and I was like, ah, oh, memory, it's you. You know, and, and memory was one of my favorite baristas at, at a coffee shop near Vitz where I used to be a minister. And so, uh, you know, catching up, I said, hey, why are you here, man? Like, this is the other side of town. You know, this is a different coffee shop. What's going on? And she said, you know, I got retrenched. They had to let me go. I thought, man, life is so hard. You know, I'm walking in there, final preparations for my sermon. I'm feeling good. And then I hear this story and I'm just, I'm so saddened. 
she's such a great woman but luckily the you know the company worked hard to find her another post and now she's a barista here at this this coffee shop called motherland and uh, you know and it's like man life is hard and we deal with this day to day we deal with it in traffic you know the, the taxi drivers continue to believe the road belongs to them and we are renting you know there's certain uh, guys who drive certain types of cars and i won't mention the brand what i will say is that it's not people who drive hyundai's and toyota's there's other guys there that drive in a very interesting manner but it's hard you, you get worked up you get frustrated you get saddened and those are those are the simple things of life think about your parenting you know you think about the 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 parent who's dealing with a three or four year old toddler who just doesn't listen. They're a strong willed child. You know, really, they are running the house and it's hard. You know, you think about the, the teenage parent or the parent of a teenager who, whose child is telling them, I don't believe in God. I just don't think he exists. You know, I think about the, the parent who, who has grown children, they've left the house and they've not kept the faith. Whether they got baptized or not, but it's like, man, I've always wanted them to be in the faith and your child has decided, no, I rather would walk away. I think about the single who longs for a partner, who longs to be married, but life is hard. They're not finding a person for them. Think about the marriage that is on the rocks. Finances or different things have crept in there and they've created a, an instability in the relationship and now it's hard to even look at one another. When people talk about date nights, you don't even know what that means anymore. It's been so long. I think about that and I think you need someone who can come alongside you with their time, with their goods, with their words and instill courage in you. To say, bro, sis, you can keep going. It doesn't have to be running. We don't have to be going at a thousand kilometers per hour. It's just one step at a time. Continuing to walk in the faith. Continuing to be there with you. I know for me, that's what I've needed. You know, it, it hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows in my life. There's been seasons of great difficulty. Many of you knew my father. When he passed away, man, I needed people who would be there to, to just comfort and, and console and encourage me. Man, when, when things were going rough in, in Palesa and I's uh, dating relationship, in fact, we were engaged and, and she, said, she said something quite harsh to me. And I realized it was my sin that had brought that out of her and, and I needed people to walk and sit and be there with me to instill courage in me and say, you can do this. That's why it's such a big deal. You know, point number two as to why it's such a big deal is because sin hardens our hearts. If you turn with me here to Hebrews chapter three, the Bible reads as follows in verse 12. It says, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, this is the core of the Bible. And if we read just the first bit, we would think it's about us. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart. We can read that as if I must see to my own heart. But yet the, the, the writer of the Hebrews here, he says, no, encourage one another. Meaning the, the see to it is for each other's hearts. That we get in there and we say, man, I'm not going to allow sin to come in here and turn you away from the living heart, living God. Because sin lies to us. You know, what's interesting about sin, sin doesn't arrive in your life like it's daily. You know, in the movies, Chuck Norris or, or maybe Liam Neeson. You know, Liam Neeson is always, his daughter has always been kidnapped. Someone's been kidnapped. You know, or, or Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's who I grew up on. But he's staring. The way he gets into a room, he like kicks the door and boom, then he walks in and he looks at them. Now, these guys have guns, and I never understand, because the gun is for this very moment. You see, when the guy walks in, he's supposed to shoot, ah, he's done, nah, -uh. Not in the movies with the staring. The staring looks around first, and then he breaks them up, and, and you know how it goes, ah, you know, that's what happens. That's not how sin enters our lives, though. You know, sin comes in, like, I don't know if you've ever had an ant problem. You know, a little cottage where Palisa and I stay is a one-bedroom cottage on someone's property, and, and literally, you know, one day I found one ant kind of, lost in the kitchen somewhere and you know what you do you know if you're a nice person you try hold it and put it outside nicely if you're like me you squash it and sweep it away um but you get rid of the ant and then two days later there's three ants a couple of days later there's ten ants before you know it you've got an ant problem because they creep in one by one coming in into your into your home that's how sin enters you know sin enters with the little bit that you're not actually confessing right now 
sin enters with that little, you're like, ah, I should probably tell someone about this, ah, but it's fine. It wasn't that big a deal that I looked at that woman like that. You know, it wasn't that big a deal, you know, that I didn't really tell the truth in this situation. You know, it wasn't that big a deal that I lost my temper in that situation. And before you know it, sin has hardened your heart. It's taken you away. It's, it's become this, this deceitful thing in your life. And you can't get back on track. And the Bible, Hebrews, the writer here is saying, man, see to it that none of you has this happen to you. Encourage one another. Get with the parent whose parenting is off the rails. Get with the guy or the woman who's in a tough marriage right now. Be there for someone who's being retrenched. You've got to encourage one another. You've got to come alongside them. Place courage in them and say, bro, sis, I believe in you. You can do this. That's why this is so important. I believe this is why Luke highlighted Joseph. Because he recognized for a community to have that awesome vibe of one in heart and mind and God's grace is there and people are preaching greatly and there's awesome stuff happening. For that to be happening, we need men and women, brothers and sisters of encouragement that will walk with people. And so the big question then becomes, okay, how do I do this, Remo? You've proposed this. I agree with you. We need this. How do I do it? And I'll say it this way. I think the, the three areas that I spoke about earlier are the key things. One, with your goods. And I would change goods to food. I don't know what it is about food. But for some reason, it works every time. You know, if you're ever going to hang out with me, you can ask the guys who've been with me on campus. We're going to eat at some point. You know, whether it's we're going to buy just a, a thing of chips and a loaf of bread and a two liter Coke, that's it. Awesome. Or maybe when we, when we moved up into the singles, we start buying things like Nando's. It doesn't matter, but there's going to be food there. Or you're going to come and bry, whatever the case may be. Food is encouraging. I don't know how it works. I don't know why God designed us that way. I just know it to be true. And I know it's true for both genders, you know. I know, sisters, maybe you like to receive ice cream or maybe you like to receive uh, chocolates, whatever the case may be. I think food is super encouraging. You know, I think speaking the word of God to one another is so important. That when someone is talking to you about, man, there's just some evil people in my office. I don't understand how God has let them continue to live. That you would remind them that the Bible talks, talks about the, you know, in the passage it says, uh, God causes the sun to rise on the righteous and the unrighteous just the same. Because he is just. You know, if someone is struggling in their marriage and, and this brother is just getting worked up, it's like, man, you know, husbands, love your wives. You remind him about that. You know, maybe it's someone who's struggling with their finances and, and it's reminding them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. I don't know what the struggle is, but what I know is that the word of God is there. It is living and active and it's able to change our lives. That's good that's words. And then I say, just be there with your time. Be generous with your time. You know, when something happens in someone's life, go. When someone is hurting or grieving, be there. Just sit there quietly with them. When someone is celebrating, be there to celebrate, right? Just be at the party. Don't be the life of the party necessarily, but be there at the party to enjoy with them. Why? Because life is hard and sin wants to harden our hearts. So in conclusion, church, as we consider how COVID-19 has changed the world and has changed us. I want to call us. I want to beg us. I want to implore us. I want to encourage us that we can come out of this different. That we can come out and live in a community of faith that is like what we read in the book of Acts. That the book of Acts is timeless. And that God's word is setting a picture before us that we can attain. And to be able to attain it, we need men who are going to decide that man, I'm going to walk alongside other men, giving them courage through my words, through my goods, and through my time. And we need women doing the exact same thing. And I believe that if we can do this for each other in this community, there's going to be so many others who will be drawn to the community here in Central, to the greater community in Joburg and Gauteng, South Africa, and to the ends of the world. Thank you so much for having me. Amen. Thank you, Rimo, for the great and powerful message. We have come to the time when we remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will be reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. It reads, For Christ's love compels us, 
because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. What I'm getting from this scripture right here is the understanding of the motivation behind communion. But um, you might say, motivation in what sense exactly? I tend to ask myself that question as well. Well, for one, I understand that as people, we need ample motivation in order to participate in any commitment. And in the scripture, we learn that Christ died for us. Isn't that motivation enough? Right. Having the knowledge that Christ loved us enough to make a lifetime commitment to us is all the motivation we need. As I am right now, I tend to lose interest or get demotivated in many circumstances. Maybe it's what they call being a teenager. But um, what I've learned from this is I need to remind myself that I made a commitment and I need to honor that commitment. So in attempts to try and motivate myself again, I just, you know, meditate on this and remind myself that I need to be serious about the commitments I make in my life. Right? But with Christ, I don't need to motivate myself because Christ's love motivates me. Right? I guess the point I'm trying to get across here is that Jesus made a commitment to us as he is the one who died for all of us. so that um, we should live no longer for ourselves, but live for him. Right. So as we partake in the communion, let us remember we are making a commitment each and every day to proclaim his death until the day he returns. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we come before you this morning to thank you for day that you have given us lord to worship you and remember the love that you showed to us when you gave your only son lord but lord we just pray that um we do not lose motivation in any way because of life's challenges we pray that we will be able to have the knowledge to always you know motivate each other to carry on um with this lifetime commitment that we have made lord but Lord, we just pray that you give us strength to push through all of this, even through the hard times, Lord. Pray that we do not ever forget that you love us unconditionally each and every day. And we strive to be those people who love each other unconditionally as well, Lord. We pray in your son's name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You are the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a
ntate tlale re la bohela molaetsa o rene le ngone wa go thatso bana ba so ntate tlale ha o sa motsebe ke se tlogolwana sa ngkhono wa gona o ne mogata ga holo ge mmitsa kokoros o ile ngo o la re sia le fa seng le le ka kwano go bona ate ha re bona motho a holetseng ke re keng inna ene a re rutang le foko la modimo habe botse go lo ya le tsatsi la go mpieno ke hore ha le robo robo la bolwetsi ba corona le fela na le wena re tla be re le ka na le wena re tla be re tsejwa ya ka batho ba mofuta mang mo go di wa re khothatsa hore a re tsejwe ya ka batho ba ileng gore ke batho ba ba go tloetsana re ne batho ba ba khothatsana mo go di o ile a ya bukeng ya diketso ga bua ka monna a bitswa Josepha o ile gone le motho o dulang a go tloetsa ba yena motho ona ka mogona dula go tloetsa ba yena ka teng ba yena ba ile ba mofa le ina ba mofa le bitso ba re ke Barnabas Barnabas yena e ga hore ngwana wa khothatso o ne tse ba hala holo ka o khothatsa jwa le mo go di wa re khothatsa o le gona re ne batho ba ileng re tsejwa ka o khothatsa ba bangwe re ne batho ba ba tsejwang ka o go tloetsa ba bangwe mo go di o rena mabaka a le magago a re dule re a hopola ka lone ka taba ena ya o re ne batho ba ba go tloetsa mo go di santha o re ga a re re hopole go re le fatshe ho boima ho re mo go na hona jwale hona le ba ba gona ba dulang ba lela ho ntate modimo ba batla mesebetsi ba lela ho ntate ka mesebetsi empa mesebetsi e santse e fatshe hona le ba bang mo hona ba ba dulang ba lela ho ntate modimo ba batla ba lekane hona le mone ba tle ba nne le ba lekane empa le ka jiko lena e santse e le bona fela ha bana ba lekane hona le ba bang ba gona ba elo re manyetse empa manyalong ho boima dintho ha di tsamaisane hantle ba dula ba lela ho ntate modimo o bane ho le boima hona le ba elo nke ba tswadi ba tswadi ba ba lela ho ntate modimo ka baka la bana ba bone bana ba elo ngore ha ba reetse bana ba elo ngore ha ba tsamae ka molao wa ntate modimo ba lela ho bone empa le ka jeko bana ba o esantse ba samame ba beso ho boima le fatseng ke ka mo re tlamela go dula re nna batho ba leng ga go tloetsana ho bane ho boima le fatseng sa bobedi tse mo go di a re bolella nsone o re hopotsa hore sebe sebe se a khona hore kenella o re hopotsa go se ga satane o dula a kentse le tsoho re bua bukeng ya ba hebera e re hopotsa e re go tloetsana ho bane sebe se khona ho tisa se thatafatsa pelo ya motho sebe se thatafatsa pelo ya motho satane ha tsena bana beso ha tseni a etsa le rata ha tsena ho wena ha sebalane le wena motho ke yo o sebetsa ka situfela re tla bona gona ha sa qetile go bona o so wela mane re ipotsa motho ka ne re motseba motho na le tumelo e matla ho etsa hetseng bana satane ha kena a sebetsa le wena ke ka situ ke ka mo bana beso re tlamelang ho dula ntse re go tloetsa sana re bontsi sana tsila hore satane a sike a re qete go bane ha ka se tse jalo o tla re qeta o mongwe le ka o mongwe sa bogago sa bone o sa bogago se mogodi a go hopotsa nsone o re ga a re na hane ditsela tse re tla go tloetsana ka tsona ya ntla tsela e moya go tloetsa motho ke go mmitsa lapeng o mo fadi jo re ja mmo go tsa tsile nwe e bile o khona go ye ho yene o ntse o tshwere sengwe nyesa go ja go bane re batho ba ileng re khothwatsa ke tse diyang maleng na go dingwe ke sone fela so tlhoka go setsa tseo o bitse motho a tle ho wena o file dule mmo go le tshe pelo e wele sa bobedi mo go di a re le fo a bua hore re dule re ne ba thoba ileng reng re bua mafoko a khothatso re bua mafoko a ileng a go tloetsa re bua mafoko a ntate modimo go bane le foko le le holo ke le foko le le tswang buke ya di buke bana ba so re tlamela go nna ba thoba ho ba re dula ntse re khothatsana ka le foko la ntate modimo sa boga go mrodi a ga a re se seng hape se tlamela go setsa ke re ne re fe batho 
kantsi ya go ba le gona re fe batho nako ya go ba le gona ba tsa bona ke dingwe o fetela o sena se le fera ya go ka rekela motho sengwe o sena se le fera ya go ka apela motho sengwe nako dingwe o fetela o sena mafuko a lo o ka khona go khotatsa motho ka bana ba empa ha o tla mo yene o dula le yene o mo mamela motho a bona go tseile matsapa a bona go tseile nako ya hao na kwe no oga si fuma ne hape o tsea na kwa yao o mo fa yone ho mamamela mwana yenu lene wa khotala bana beso a re nne batho ba ba khotetsana re nne batho ba ba gotloetsana ho bana fatsing ho wima ho bana sibi si kintseletso ho bana beso ke yone mo laetsa wa ka tsego o ke ya le bo wow what a wonderful service um i feel encouraged i think what encourages me more is the fact that we can learn uh, uh, from people of all age. And today I feel like we learned uh, from, uh, from those uh, that are young. Um, uh, um, uh, for me, I'm encouraged by the fact that, you know, Remo, you know, he was, he was in Kids Kingdom, and now today he's the one who's teaching us the word. And I'm also grateful for Clinton for sharing a wonderful message. Uh, as well, another young man um, who's sharing uh, the word of God for me, it is a passion for me. When I see uh, young people uh, grow to know God and grow to teach us about God. So for me, I'm, I'm super, super encouraged. I hope you are. Uh, thank you, brothers. Thank you for the wonderful job you're doing. And uh, at this time, uh, let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for using your young people, for the Lord, to uh, to encourage us, O Lord of King, for the Lord. Uh, it is, for me, it's always a personal encouragement when I see that, O Lord of King, Father. We pray that, Lord, indeed, we'll be people that are known for encouraging one another, that, my Lord, my King, for the Lord, throughout the week, we'll consider how we may spare each other towards love and good deeds. Please, O Lord of King, Father, may the Holy Spirit continue to urge us when we, we are starting to sleep on the job, may he urge us, my Lord, my King, for Lord, so that we go, we take out our phones, and instead of uh, being in social media, that we will take those phones and use them for your kingdom. Take those phones, make necessary phone calls, send messages to encourage those who have been encouraged in a while. We love you, Father. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We are dismissed for a great time of fellowship wherever you are. See you next week, same time, same place.
Oh, 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 oh,